This conference will now be recorded. meeting to order, please. Um, we'd like to open with a moment of silence and the pledge of allegiance to the flag, so if you'd all stand. Not a lot that can be said about a moment of silence. Take it from your heart, whichever is best for you, whether it be personal, national, international. There's a lot of things going on that it's time to reflect on. Thank you. And now our pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> item on the agenda, public comment, agenda items only. Okay. Seeing none, moving on to old business. I hear a motion uh, to approve uh, the actions listed in old business items one and two. So moved. Second. Any discussion or questions? Hearing none, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Well, it's um, our honor here uh, to be able to give a proclamation to bring to mind something so very important about April 2023 being Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And I we have Lauren Peterson, Peterson with us this morning. Lauren, if you'd like to come up with me and I'll read this and present this to you. Thank you very much. Okay. Monroe County Commissioner's Office, our proclamation for today. Whereas sexual assault affects every person in Monroe County as a victim, survivor, or as a family member, friend, neighbor, or co worker of a victim, survivor. And whereas from July 2021 20, to June 2022, over 138 adult, teen, and child survivors 
of sexual violence have received 588 hours of counseling and advocacy through women's resources, and yet we know that many sexual violence survivors never come forward. And whereas it is critical to increase public awareness of sexual violence in its many forms, to educate the community about the vital need for their involvement in efforts to reduce violence, to increase support for all agencies providing sexual assault violence services, and whereas members of our community are urged to support and assist in any way possible to advance a society where all children, <coughs> women and men, can live in peace, free from violence and exploitation. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Monroe County Board of Commissioners hereby proclaims the month of April 2023 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month in Monroe County and further commends all who work towards eliminating sexual violence in our county. Monroe County Board of Commissioners, Sharon S. Labrador, John R. Warrior, and John D. Christian. Thank you. Thank you for your services and for the work your staff and you do in Monroe County. Thank you. Do we want to uh, talk just a tad sure. about uh, Take Back the Night? Absolutely. We have a couple of events actually in April being Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Uh, one that's been going on for many years here in the county is Take Back the Night, which is a national movement to raise awareness about sexual assault, sexual violence where we go out into the streets where there's, an, uh, there's a march through Main Street coming up at East Stratford University where we hold a rally. It'll be on April 12th, which is a Wednesday, starting here, uh, starting at the Coward House Square with a little bit of a, of a gathering, kicking off the march right at six and ending up at uh, Stroud Hall at East Stroudsburg for a bit of a rally. Also this week, we're going to be having a survivor speak spoken word or poetry reading over at East Stroudsburg University. Uh, that's actually tomorrow at five o'clock. More information is on our website and on our Facebook. You'll also probably see throughout the town some teal ribbons. Teal is the color of Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Um, so if you're out there and you see the teal ribbons, take a picture, take a picture with you, tag women's resources on your social, um, hashtag no more, hashtag SAM2023, S-A-A-M, Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Um, but we hope to see everybody out at any of these events that we're having uh, take back the night or at the Survivor's uh, Voice, Survivor Speaks event early, uh, later this week. And we greatly appreciate the support of the commissioners, the support of the county, Monroe County uh, has been a fantastic place to, to live and work. Anytime there's a need of women's resources, whether it's volunteers, uh, resources, household items for our shelter, uh, the, the community has been fantastically supportive, but there's so much more that we can do to raise awareness, to show support, to be visible um, and allow victims who are maybe suffering in silence, suffering in the darkness, to reach out to those around you, help them to receive services at Women's Resources through our 24-hour hotline, 570-421-4200. Thank you. Thank you. Or just one question. You always have one for me, every yeah. time. <laughs> this is a new one. Okay. Not the effect of COVID. Have you noticed the uh, I mean, has it increased domestic violence? Has it remained pretty much the same? What's What's been the impact? Right, so for domestic and sexual violence, over the peak of COVID, so let's say early to mid-2020 when everything was shut down, we strangely actually saw a very a strict decrease in hotline calls. Um, and we realized that that was happening throughout the country and throughout the world because there wasn't even a safe time and place to make a phone call. People were at home with their abusers. They weren't going to work, going to school, making trips, making travels. So there really wasn't even a safe place to make a phone call. But once things started to open up again, people were starting to go back to their lives. The floodgates opened. We saw in 2021, 2022, the most amount of hotline calls, over 2,800 hotline calls um, in one year that we've ever seen. And this past year was almost, 20, uh, it was almost 2,000 hotline calls. So we see that the rates, not necessarily that the incidences are happening more, but we're realizing that we're doing a good job with outreach, with education, with awareness building, whereas people who maybe weren't identifying themselves as survivors or victims, recognizing what's happening to themselves or recognizing themselves as what happened before as a survivor to reach out for help. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he likes when he gets a well prepared. <laughs> Moving on to new business. Motion. Oh, motion, sorry. Motion to approve uh, the proclamation for April 2023 Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Moved. Second. First and second, any discussion? 
Hearing none, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, new business. Do I hear a motion to approve the actions listed in new business? Uh, starting with number one, personnel, items A and B. Second. First and second. Any discussion or questions? Hearing none, see none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Number two, got your motion to approve the actions listed in number two, electronic financial transactions, ratify items A, B, C. So moved. Second. First and second. Any discussion or questions? Hearing none, see none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Number three, travel authorizations. Approve and ratify. Got your motion to approve the actions listed. In number three, item A. So moved. Second. First and second. Any discussion or questions? Hearing and seeing it, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. okay, moving on to the commissioner's office. Number five. Your motion to approve the actions listed in number five, items A through O. I'll make that motion. Second. The first and second. Any discussion or questions? Mm -hmm. Wait, you do number four? We're going to do four. You have to do number four. I, Children and youth. Oh, I skipped it. Okay, All guys, that's right. why you're, you're here. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, <laughs> Let's go back to four. Sorry. Okay. All right. Monroe <laughs> County Children and Youth Services. Item number four. Do I hear a motion to approve the actions listed in number four, items A, B, and C? So <laughs> Second. First and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, number five, Commissioner's Office. You have the motion, you have the second. Yes, we do. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, seeing all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. <clears throat> Moving on to number six, Monroe County Emergency Services. Do I hear a motion to approve the actions listed in number six, item A? So moved. Second. First and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Number seven. Do I hear a motion to approve the actions listed in number seven, Monroe County Municipal Waste Management Authority, item A? So moved. Second. First and second. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, moving on to number nine. Motions number nine. Number eight. Uh, eight. Monroe County Transportation Authority. Is that your motion to adopt item A in number eight, Monroe County Transportation Authority? So moved. Second. First and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, seeing all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Number nine, Monroe County Redevelopment Authority. Do I hear a motion to approve the actions listed in number nine, item A? So moved. Second. First and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Number 10. Capital outlay purchases. Do I hear a motion to approve <coughs> actions listed in number 10? Capital outlay purchases, item A. So moved. Second. First and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Computer capital purchases, number 11. Do I hear a motion to approve the actions listed in number 11? 11, item A. So moved. Second. First and second. Any Discussion? Hearing none, seeing all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, moving on to miscellaneous. Any miscellaneous words of the order? Have nothing. Community nights coming up, May 3rd, Northampton Community College. Uh, starting uh, Well, there's a number the of different one. things. Yeah. It starts at 5. The main thing opens at 6. And we'll have more specific information going forward. <clears throat> <laughs>
Any other in the room? <coughs> Public comment. So. Okay. Great. Uh, Would you love? Uh, Kubik, work out at the Monroe County Correctional Facility. You. you guys know. Thank you. Uh, came here today. It's been about six months since any of us have been here. We kind of took a break. I've had a lot going on in my personal life outside here, so I had time to come. Um, here today to address the same issues we had six months ago. Um, as you guys know, you're well aware of what happened to the officer that got stabbed at the hospital the other week, two weeks ago. We had an officer attacked in an escape attempt that was stabbed with a knife, multiple puncture wounds to her clothing, injuries to herself. Um, there's a lot going on. You guys are well aware. I'm here to see what we're doing. You know, we, last we spoke at some of these meetings, we had said that our staffing numbers would get better once we settled our union contract and our pay went up. None of that's helped. None of that's changed. Two and a half years ago, we came here, our staffing numbers were right around 100 officers out of 122. Two and a half years later, we're sitting at 102 officers, truncated classes, and a pay rate. So it's obviously still an issue, right? Hiring's not our problem. Retention is our problem. We've hired 87 officers in two and a half years. Out of those 87, 26 remain. And that still puts our numbers at 102 officers. So retention is the problem. Retention problem comes because the conditions at the jail are unsafe. We're still being overworked. Midnight people are still being mandated six out of six days that they work, five out of six days that they work, three 17 hour days. There needs to be more done to get people in this building. It's, it's two and a half years of everything we've been going through. <laughs> We're still dealing with the security failures on the administration's end out there that we're hearing silence from the prison board. You guys, Sheriff Morris, everybody comes out there, they walk around on inspection day, turn a blind eye to everything because the building's prettied up for one day and everything passes and everything's fine. You guys leave, we go right back to the mess that we have. We got a sheriff by email all the time who never comes. Comes to the jail to visit his pedophile friend and put money on the pedophile's books, but he doesn't come out for the security issues. I don't know if you guys are well aware that over the last several months since I've been here, we've had multiple shanks found in that jail, and the administration has done nothing. Our max custody unit, we had an inmate get his head bashed in by a two by four. We've had two shanks found on that unit. You know what happened to that unit? Zero shank sanctions to that unit. We had an inmate make a key to pop a door to get to the unit next door to stab an inmate and murder his co-defendant. We found that, luckily, before that happened. What happened to that unit? What happened to that inmate? Nothing. That unit was not locked down. There was no modifications made. That inmate is put right back on that unit like nothing happened. The inmate that stabbed Wanda <laughs> Rivera at the hospital multiple times. She comes back from the hospital. She's not put on SRT status. She's not put any type of extensive restrictions. Nothing happens for days until I'm in that building making a big stink out of this. This administration, you guys, sheriff, Everything is failing at that building. And I've been coming here now for a while. And I keep telling you, something very tragic is going to happen. And what happened to Wanda Rivera is as close as it can come to one of us dying. And it's not acceptable. I can tell you after what happened to Wanda Rivera at that hospital, we've had no training on hospital duty. We have people because of these two-week truncated classes, they have no idea how hospital duty works. We received no training on how to work at the hospital. So we get new guys that get sent out for hospital duty and they have no idea what they're doing. You would think maybe the administration would train us on hospital duty after something tragic like that happened. You know what we've been training on for the last two weeks? The grooming policy because of my beard. That's what we train on every day in briefing for the last two weeks is grooming after an officer was stabbed at the hospital. You think we can start sending two officers to the hospital. We've been asking for two people at the hospital for my entire career there. That is the weakest link in our security chain. The inmates at the hospital with no armed guard. We had an escape from the hospital at St. Luke's, what, two years ago? The inmate walked out of the hospital, was in the parking lot. There's no reason that there's not two officers at the hospital. I ask you today, why does that not happen? Why do we not have two people at the hospital? Because other departments do. I can tell you why, money had the conversation with Gary. It's a matter of paying for two people to be at the hospital. You know what it costs for one person to be at the hospital for an eight hour shift? $276.
the Wanda Rivera's life, there's a price on it, and it's $276. That's the value of my life. Maybe $35,000, because that's the life insurance policy if I die in the line of duty. There's, there's, a, there's a monetary value to our life that is taking precedence over the safety and security. That $276 doesn't justify what happened to Wanda Rivera. That $35,000 when she's dead doesn't justify her not coming back to her family forever. Changes need to happen. I came here today with just a couple people. It's, it's, I don't want to flood this room again with 40, 50 people. I can tell you the people at that jail are more furious today than they were six months ago when we came here. <coughs> it is not changing. There is no change, and it's not acceptable. So I'm asking today, what steps are we going to be taking to retain people better at the jail so we have more people? That would probably be retention bonuses like we've been talking about for two years because nobody wants to stay there. Nobody gets paid double time for these six mandates in a week. The county fights. The jail lies and hides when we get mandated three, four times in a row. They don't transmit the reports to Allison to get us paid for the double time. Things need to change in that facility. And, and I'm asking, what steps are you guys taking? Because we're still not hearing anything from you guys. We're not getting email responses. There's been nothing. We, we did this months ago. We did this back and forth game. It's not a game anymore. Look what happened to Wanda Rivera. This is not a game. This is our lives. This is not justifiable anymore. What steps are we going to take to make changes? And I don't want to hear the same normal. We'll discuss it further. We'll talk to Gary. We'll go to the prison board. Come to the prison board meeting, Mr. Kubik, because I tried. And I get denied when I'm at work. It's not even on the county calendar. I can't even tell you when the next prison board meeting is. It's not even on the calendar. I've been checking. There, there has to be immediate steps taken. Man. And these administrators out there need to be held accountable. I've been saying that. Gary hates it when I say it. My boy hates it when I say it because I'm throwing him under the bus. If I forget to do a head count on the unit or I lose a piece of equipment, I get disciplined. I get suspended. I get written up. You got Joe McCoy making the decision to allow a max custody unit have three weapons on it in a matter of six months. These are murderers that are making deadly weapons. And when I talk to him about it, he says, oh, well, they're max custody already. What else do you want me to do, Kubik? He, he, they're, they're gambling with our lives. What happens to these people for doing this? My comment is, you, is um, we appreciate information. Um, however, I know you don't want to hear this. This is a public forum. And it's very difficult for us in a public forum. I've offered you guys to meet uh, and try. All right, Officer Kubik, my turn. Thank you. And thank you for the information about it, the prison board meeting not being on the calendar, the county calendar, that we need to attend to as well. Gentlemen, do you have any comments? No, I heard them. Okay. I'm going to find out why Allison does. You're just saying that people don't get paid? I'm saying that the county supervisors at that jail specifically refuse to transmit when people are mandated three times in a row, or why they're mandated, or when we get hit. Well, that's that, different. You said that. Oh, Allison's not refusing to pay us. Right. Our jail, the people at our jail, are refusing to transmit it to Allison. Allison immediately pays us when she gets it. The jail is refusing to transmit that information to her. The supervisors don't send the email notifying her why we were mandated, or if we no, get hit. But she, it, there's no reason for that. We don't get paid unless she gets an email. Call Allison. But you're saying that they get it. If the jail sends the email, the people at the jail are refusing to send the email. If I get hit with less than one hour's notice for a scheduling error, I get an extra hour pay for that. You know what happens all the time when I get hit with one hour less notice? I go to the unit commanders and I say, hey, why was I hit? Was it a scheduling error? They say, it's none of your business. We need a body. You're the body. Pick a post to work. Then when we call Allison and say, hey, last Friday, I got hit with less than one hour notice. Did I get the extra hour? She'll say, no, Mr. Kubik. I didn't get an email from the jail saying it was a scheduling error. So then we have to go digging and find a supervisor that can kind of do us a favor and let us look at the schedule and figure out why we were hit. And then four weeks later, we get the pay. I don't care about the pay. That's a minor issue. That's not the big deal. And I'm glad you can comment on that. I would prefer you actually comment on the staffing numbers two and a half years later. What are we doing to get these staffing numbers up? 
Other jails are offering hiring and retention bonuses. Pike County offered a massive pay increase. It didn't get their staffing numbers up. You know what they did? They offered another pay increase to get their staffing numbers up. Pike County offers any ex-law enforcement people, <coughs> any years of experience they have, they roll right into the jail at whatever pay scale they should be at instead of starting at the bottom pay. We don't do any of this stuff. Retention is obviously our problem. It's not hiring. We hired 87 people in two and a half years. Over 50% of that building has less than three years experience. That, that should throw a red flag that people aren't staying there. Why are they not staying there? It's the work condition. Let's, and then I get to the stuff that's deadly. What are we doing about Gary Heidel and Joe McCoy not handling these deadly weapons and things that are putting our lives at risk? I addressed this six months ago here. I addressed it five months ago here. I addressed it nine months ago here. What are we doing about that? Is it going to take one of us to die for them to be held accountable? One of us has to die is what this is coming down to. Anybody else? Exactly. Oh, I do have a quick question. Right. Um, Would you please say your oh, name? My name is Lance Borkheiser. I work at the jail, too. Thank you. But uh, this has nothing to do with the jail. I was recently on uh, Monroe County employee opportunities for the county. And I noticed some of the pay rates that you guys have listed. Depending on the source, the Monroe County Poverty wage rate is between twenty and twenty-three dollars an hour. Is there a reason like a lot of the clerks are getting paid sixteen, seventeen dollars an hour? That's well below poverty rate. Again, it's a union issue. In some cases. In most cases. A lot of the clerks aren't union. Again, we have made strides to increase those rates. <laughs> and that still doesn't explain why they're so far below poverty rates. I asked a question the other day of a person that was making a presentation as to what the poverty rate was, and they said between 15 and 17 an hour for a single. I mean, it's hard to say it's 15 to 17 if you're married with three kids and you're the sole wage earner. But uh, as John said, we've attempted to get all of the wages in line with. Uh, with the surrounding area, you know? I understand the surrounding area. It's just that Monroe County, because of where we're located and everything else, we have a much higher cost of living than Pike, Northampton, Carbon. We have a much mm -hmm. higher cost of living, which, what, is there any way you guys can help with that? Like raise up their wages so they're not as, it is hard for hardship when it comes to money. Some of the people I know in the courthouse are working three jobs just to make a living. Again, that's an ongoing thing that we're constantly looking at. Yes, you 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 every day basically well, based on budget preparation and whatnot. A year ago, we had Orchard take a look at what people were earning and boosted people up. Now, not as far as you think they should have been boosted, but they were boosted up. This year, we were able to give a four and a half percent wage increase, which was a percent and a half higher than has been achieved in the past. All of these are efforts to try to remunerate the people at the lower level at a at a higher rate, but it doesn't come quickly. And you know, it, I hate to say it, but we continue to work on it. Every meeting we have with HR is part of the discussion. Right. Okay. Seeing no other public comment. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. And um, just for a notice, Board of Elections is at 10:30, and the Board of Assessment is at 1:30. Okay. Thank you all for coming.